All right, when it comes to team building inside of Ultimate Team, and really just in general in Madden, uh, I, I really do believe there's like two different ways of going about it. There is the meathead approach, um, and then there's the kind of nerdy, analytical, more, you know, dive, deep dive approach. Now, I am definitely of the uh, of the meathead approach, okay? I'll be 100% honest with you. I'm going to break down what I'm looking at in general, and then break down what I'm looking at per position a little bit more, okay? Um, so, first and foremost, across the board, I am really looking for, and this is a general, general, very generalized here. I am looking for speed, and I'm looking for height, pretty much across skill positions. I am looking for speed, and I'm looking for height, okay? Those are the two biggest things in Madden. Your wide receivers need to be fast and strong, and your DBs need to be fast and strong. And by strong, I mean tall, not, not actually strong. Um... You need to be big dudes, okay? It will almost always help man to man. It will consistently be a very good thing for you. All right. Now getting to actual positions, um, to get a little bit more, you know, uh, in there, kind of, you know, talking about it. QB. The number one thing I look for QB is it's, it's an order somewhat of this. We're looking at QB release. All right. Preferably they get slinger one, um, and then you can get into some other ones. Whatever one Ryan Fitzpatrick has, uh, or like Josh Allen's a really good one too. I think that's generic three. Um, QB release, uh, we're making sure he hits, you know, the, the basic throwing stats, which if they're a newer card right now, they will hit those basic throwing stats. Even that I'm not super concerned about just halfway decent throw power and accuracies. Um, and then I'm looking at what their AP is for set feet lead, right? Three AP Ryan Fitzmagic is the second, second best set feet lead. And then I'm looking at their speed. Okay. Ryan Fitzpatrick is an 83 speed card. So pretty decent. Okay. Pretty, pretty decent. At QB, I'm also looking for a righty. I, I prefer righties in this game, I think. Um, I could go lefty. I've used Michael Vick a little bit, but I'm mostly looking for righties, all right? Um, at halfback, really, I'm looking for speed. And there is some combination of speed and weight, you know, looking for that high trucking um, high trucking attribute, looking to see if they could really fight past extra yard for extra yardage and yards after contact. Um, but speed's a big one here right now. I have Marshawn Lynch on a 50 out of 50 Raiders theme team. So this is the fastest card in the game. He gets a plus two speed boost. So Marshawn is my running back, okay? I'm not worried about catching right here, okay? In reality, you really should never look at catching for your halfback. And I'll stand by this, at least for the time being, and across most Maddens, where you're throwing your halfback. Typically, it's not in contested traffic, right? He'll catch most of them. He will. On the competitive game mode, on all pro, all man, he'll catch most of them, okay? Hmm. At wide receiver, really looking for speed, height, and route running, okay? You want to make sure they hit at least 85 route running for um, across the board. Uh, 90 would be preferable, all right? Speed, height, route running. Those are the big, big, big things right here. And then looking to AP. AP is a big deal. So Michael Crabtree's on my team. He's 6'1", not the tallest. I prefer about 6'3 in this game because of agging. Um, he is fast, but... He gets one AP slot apprentice and one AP short in, two necessary abilities. So he's he, he's very cost efficient. He makes a lot of sense. All right, boys. Um, fullback don't care about. Sorry. Uh, at tight end, this is an interesting position. You kind of want typically you want kind of the best baller here, right? You want someone who's big. You want someone who can run routes. Pretty similar to wide receiver. Um, and if their AP works out well, preferably good AP. We have Dave Casper here, one of the fastest cards in the game. Etc. Etc. Right. Uh, he pretty much the same as what we're looking for at the wide receiver spot. All right. Uh, now in this game, I do a Donald Parham in my lineup. That's because he's six eight, and you know th th different ratings and different matters can get tailored a little bit differently, right? Or can get you know a little tailored here and there. And he is six eight, which means he's amazing at getting ags. Agging is a huge part of offense in this game, so you have to ag. Offensive line. Now. This is where I'm willing to sacrifice, and you should consistently be willing to sacrifice if you're trying to make a theme team. Theme teams are the best, right? If you are a non-theme team, you are at a natural disadvantage. You can win, but you are at a natural disadvantage, and there's no arguing that. It's just the fact of the matter. Raiders and the Legends theme teams are the best as of right now, which is uh, September 25th. Okay, there's no arguing this. Uh, the, the, there is. I play Madden with the best Madden players in the world on a daily basis. This is the general consensus. If there was a better theme team than these two, they would be doing it because it cost them thousands and thousands to tens, to some of them hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? So they put in way more work than even myself figuring this part out. Um, offensive line, you kind of have to eat. Um, now, there is some argument if you pull your guards a lot to get kind of faster guards. Um, 
And then there'll be an argument here as well to get secure protectors or edge protectors at the edges. Um, but right now, really, it's just throwing in pieces here. Uh, I'm, I, that's really what it comes down to. Ratings here, they change. I feel like they change a lot year to year. And there's so many ratings that are like more placebo, in my opinion, than anything. I really don't even try to dive deep into them. I will say one thing. Do not just judge by overall ratings. For example, Gabe Jackson's a 78 overall right here. At right guard, because he's out of position. At right guard, he's actually an 82. That four overall drop does nothing except say he's a four overall less. Okay? Again, do not look at the top right 86 overall either for my team um, because it doesn't matter. Like, that is not what we're going... That's not what we're looking at here, okay? I will say this... Um, I will say this, that this is an important thing, I guess, to kind of point out, is that Nelson Aguilar um, is not actually a starting wide receiver for me. We have Larry Fitzgerald, who's hidden down here into my slot wide receiver. He is actually one of my starting wide receivers. Just wanted to point that out for you guys really fast, okay? Just so you guys can see that. Um, on defense, let's look at this, okay? Again, a lot of these guys are filler positions. These are Raiders. Um, so they're filling out the Raiders theme team here, okay? So, with that being said, you know, for example, Divine Diablo, he never sees the field. He is not on my field ever. So, I got 86 Divine Diablo right here or 77 overall Divine Diablo right here. It does not matter at all, literally, because why would it? The only thing it matters for is special teams and getting my overall rating higher, which I don't care. Who cares? You know what I mean? Um, same with Perriman. He never sees my field. Khalil Mack never sees my field. Crosby never sees my field. Uh, Chandler Jones sees my field very occasionally. Uh, even Randy Moss doesn't actually see my field ever. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, keep that in mind. On DBs, what we're looking for is height. Really not even height so much. If you can get a, a bigger DB, it's preferable. But it's speed, man coverage, zone coverage. Preferably both of those, or all three of those, preferably 90 or above or as close as possible as you can get to them, right? Um, Jonathan Abram, never on my field. He's just my starting strong safety right now. All right, and we'll go into some of my specialties in a second. Um... Users, I have Derek Johnson as one of my users, and then I have I user Ronnie Lott or Trevor Moerig as my other user. Users, you want dudes who are big, tall, fast, high cod. Derek Johnson's a great example of this, except the one thing that sucks about him is that he is a middle linebacker. Look at his stats on the left here, 89 speed, 6'3". Uh, I don't know what his cod and other stuff are. Hit power, 91, which is always nice for a user. Tackling, 91, which is good for a user. Um... You know, it's, I, I, it's more ideal. I'd have Lurker on him for one AP to make him animate, which is fine. It's a little annoying, but it's fine. I make do with it, okay? He plays for me, though, all right? He will actually play for me. Uh, let's look at, you know, again, DBs, we're going to have as close to 90 speed as possible and as close to 90 uh, man and zone as possible. Um, right here, we have Lester Hayes. He is 90 speed, 6'2", 93 man coverage, 88 zone coverage, right? Champ Bailey, 90 speed, 88 zone, 93 man. Uh, Night Train Lane, 94 man, 93 zone, uh, 90 speed, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, it's nice to have some big dudes occasionally just because you can kind of move them around a little bit. Tariq Woolen, for example, if someone's really agging me consistently, I'll throw Tariq Woolen on them because he's 6'4". Now, will that stop the ags? I don't know, but it might help. Um... So just keep that in mind a little bit, right? D-line. So I actually, my D-linemen who actually play for me are in my specialists. All right. Again, I have a theme team. So you have to hide some people around. There's some better YouTubers than myself who can explain how to make a theme team. I'm pretty bad at this side of things, by the way, boys. So I apologize. Um, I have Bruce Smith and Deacon Jones. Now, my team is not the best because I could have better people here who are doing the same jobs. Uh, I just am currently on pack strike. So I have not upgraded my team in close to a week now. Um, but looking at D lineman, let's just take a gander at these boys. Um, speed is good. Speed is a good thing here. Height, not as important. Typically you'll get big dudes here. Um, but the big thing is high power move, high finesse move. Um, I really don't know what we're looking at for like what, if there's thresholds or anything like that. I have edge threats on these dudes, preferably dudes who get low edge threat, uh, you want. Um, closer to 90 at anything can be though is preferable. So I'd like to get power move, finesse move both of these guys up to 90. Their speeds are fine right now, uh, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, faster is better. Uh, I'm really not looking a ton at block shedding. Block shedding is an important thing. It's just it's lower on the list, right? It's lower on the list of importance. Um, again, power move, finesse move, two big things because majority of people you'll play are passers. Block shedding is only a run stat. And we don't even know. We don't have any actual... The thing is, we don't have any actual statistics um, for 
the difference between 90 block shed and 85 block shed, right? But I can tell you the difference between 90 speed and 85 speed or 90 man coverage and 85 man coverage, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind for the D-line. Warren Sass by D-Tackle. For D-Tackles, I do like... I have a placebo in my head where I think I want the biggest, fattest dude possible because I think... Uh, I will say I do think it can help in the run game and help collapse the pocket uh, for someone who's big, strong right there. But again, that's not even really based on a ton besides just my own personal feelings. So that's Warren Sapp and uh, also Sam Adams is one of my other D tackles there. Um, uh, kicker, again, I have a theme team, so I had to get Daniel Carlson right here. Preferably, you just want the highest kick power possible right here, right? Just the highest kick power as possible. Kick returners. I don't believe you want an offensive player here who plays for you because you don't want him to break a 30-yard return and then he's tired in offense. So I prefer to have a DB here, um, who, and you might be sacrificing something, but, you know, it, it's I'd rather sacrifice something like a kick return and not have him be tired. On that note, though, if you can get a good guy right here at fullback, a lot of people kick to your fullback position. So a lot of people put Mike Allstott right here, actually. And he's a dog because they'll kick to him, and he's not a normal fullback. You know what I mean? Uh, he's really, really good. So um, that's just something to consider. Um, my team isn't the most well-built thing ever. I hope I can just shine some light onto kind of what I'm always looking at when I look at players. I see a lot of people going around talking about this guy doesn't have play rec. This guy doesn't have awareness. This guy doesn't have this, that, and what. Um, traits are something that do matter. It's just they're not a priority for me. It's really like if two players are exactly the same, I'll take, I'll take a look at traits. Um... Yeah, the reason I don't go with a super analytical approach with this, boys, is because I think there's so many little tiny things that we just don't have enough data on, and it's a lot more placebo than anything. Um, not even placebo, but a lot more like gut feel than anything with a lot of those deep stats, and they change so often. And again, with no proof, I think it's really just, I think it's, you're just kind of hoping that you're right. Whereas, you know, if you focus on these key stats like speed, height, route running, um, zone, man coverage, you'll see a lot more. Uh, a lot more, what you would call it, um, bang for your buck, and a lot less time spent kind of deciphering through players. Uh, and occasionally, sometimes you'll see a player who just outplays his ratings. Happens sometimes that that, that can get attributed to some of those different stats. That, you know, like awareness play rec, it definitely can. Sometimes it can be attributed to um, traits. And sometimes, I don't know. I really don't have a good uh, explanation for you. So hopefully, this this video helps you guys out a little bit. Um, just a little bit of explanation. Uh, and what I'm looking at from a competitive point of view, this is why a lot of a lot of other competitive players share a similar view of mine. Um, yeah.